Maris Bredis will face Mike Perez in the quarterfinal of the World Boxing Super Series Cruiserweight Division uh, version of this particular tournament. Now, just to give you a rundown of the fighters, in case you're not familiar with them, Maris Bredis is the current WBC World Cruiserweight Champion. He is 32 years of age. He's from Latvia. He's had 22 fights, 22 wins, 18 wins by knockout. He stands six foot one inches tall. He is an orthodox fighter. His most notable victories were certainly his last fight when he defeated Marco Hook for the vacant WBC Cruiserweight World title, which was stripped from Tony Bellew. Uh, he also has fought people like Ola Duradola, who's a decent level cruiserweight as well. He fought Manuel Char. Uh, that fight was actually at heavyweight, which just shows you how big uh, Maris Breeders is. He was 213 pounds for that Manuel Char fight. Uh, Char was 245, and he knocked Manuel Char out with a uppercut. Spectacular knockout. For those of you who haven't seen it, I recommend watching it. It was a terrific, terrific uh, punch from Maris Breeders in that particular fight. Breeders is a boxer puncher. He hits hard. He moves well. He's got quick feet, and he used them very, very effectively against Marco Hook, again, in his last fight. He just totally outboxed Marco Hook and outmaneuvered him and won a wide, wide decision, quite comfortably, actually. On the other side of the equation, we have Mike Perez. Mike Perez is a former heavyweight contender. Uh, in the amateurs, he fought at heavyweight, which is 200 pounds, so that's cruiserweights in the pro, pro game. So he really should have been a cruiserweight all along. But as with so many Cuban heavyweights, as soon as he turned professional, he started eating and eating and eating, and he moved up to heavyweight. So this is his second fight at cruiserweight. His first fight, he won in the first round against uh, some guy who didn't really want to be in there with him. <laughs> so this will be his second fight at cruiserweight. He is a southpaw. He is 31 years of age, so a year younger than Maris Breedis. He's originally from Cuba, now fights out of Cork Island. As I say, he stands 6 foot 1, has a record of 25 fights, 22 wins, 2 losses, 1 draw, with 14 knockouts to his name, and one of his losses was by knockout, and that was to Alexander Povetkin. He lost that fight in the first round, and bizarrely claimed that he was actually drunk in the ring against Alexander Povetkin. He said that he struggled very badly after seriously hurting Magomed Abdusalamov in a brutal fight that he had a heavyweight a few years ago in which Magomed Abdusalamov was left with life-changing injuries. He's now a cripple because of brain damage he sustained against Mike Perez. After that, it was noticeable that Perez's performances were deteriorating. Uh, he didn't quite seem with it mentally after the uh, Abdusalamov fight. He says he turned to drink and he just wasn't training properly and his mind wasn't properly unboxing. He blames, or at least partially blames, the Povetkin defeat on that. Now, he's been in there with, you know, some pretty good opposition. Obviously, Povetkin is a very good fighter. He also fought Brian Jennings. He lost that fight by split decision. He fought Carlos Takam. That was a fight that he had a draw in. A lot of people felt like he was fortunate to have a draw with Takam. A lot of people felt like he lost it. And before that, he fought the brutal fight with Magomed Abdusalamov. He won that fight by a 10-round unanimous decision. So you can see a pattern, certainly, after he uh, fought Abdusalamov. He fought Takam, and he didn't look good in the Takam fight. Then he fought Jennings. He didn't look good in that fight. He fought a guy called uh, Darnell Wilson, who was a journeyman after that, won that fight. So, you know, you can understand him beat, at least beating a the journeyman. Then he fought Povetkin and was stopped, knocked out in the first round. So, yeah, you can definitely see a pattern of deteriorating performances after the Magomed Abdusalamov fight. But at the same time, he was fighting better opposition after then so you have to expect him to uh, you know have it a little bit more tough so uh, even before then he fought in prize fighter he won the prize fighter in the uk he beat people like gregory tony and ty fields and kirsten manswell and people like that in that particular tournament so yeah most of you will know of mike perez stylistically he tends to be aggressive mike perez but he can box so I want to call him a boxer puncher, but more on the puncher side. I wouldn't say he's necessarily the the hardest hitter you've ever seen. Certainly not a heavyweight. At cruiserweight, his punches will probably have more authority. But then again, we're not sure because 
he's carrying a lot less body mass now. So will he hit as hard as some of the top cruiserweights out there? It remains to be seen. Potentially he might. Um, but a heavyweight, he was a decent puncher, but not a devastating puncher. But aggressive, you know. A, a guy who uses skill and slickness, but in, a, in an aggressive fashion, in a front foot fashion. Uh, and it's going to be interesting seeing him fight Meris Breedis. Breedis being the WBC cruiserweight champion, it's very interesting that he decided to pick Mike Perez as an opponent for this quarterfinal. Uh, what does he see in Mike Perez? Does he see a guy who's damaged goods? Do you see a guy who is maybe going to be drained at the weight? Um, you know, what does he see? Does he see a guy who, because he's been in there with Pavetkin and a lot of big names in the heavyweight division, maybe he sees an opportunity to bolster his own market value and attach himself to a name in Mike Perez who has been in there with a lot of high-profile fighters. So by beating Perez, maybe he's hoping to bolster his... Uh, you know, his uh, visibility, his market value and his popularity, basically. So maybe that's what it's all about. But Mike Perez could be the dark horse in this particular tournament at Cruiserweight. Uh, he's always had ability, but as I say, like so many Cuban fighters, seem, like so many Cuban heavyweight fighters seem to lack discipline. Can't seem to keep himself away from fast food. <laughs> well now he's down at cruiserweight and he is in tremendous condition we might get to see the best Mike Perez we might get to see Mike Perez's full potential as long as he's not too damaged from what he's been through in his career so far physically or mentally then uh, you know, we, we should get to see what he's really all about finally so yeah definitely looking forward to this fight this is one of the most intriguing matchups I think in the, in the quarterfinals of this cruiserweight version of the World Boxing Super Series really looking forward to this one who do you see winning? Do you think Perez can take this? I've seen a few people already picking Perez to win the whole tournament. Um, interesting. What do you guys think? Will Perez win? You know, one thing we have to take into account is the fact that Meris Breedis has been active. Mike Perez has not been active. Mike Perez has been out, what, two years since the Povetkin defeat. He came back and had a little blowout against some guy who didn't want to be in the ring with him. You have to take that into account. You know, ring sharpness and experience and whatnot maybe Breedis is taking that into account maybe he's thinking yeah Perez has got ability but he's been out the ring a long time without facing top competition so I don't know let me know what you think in the comment section people it's happening I'm out